In this clip, we're going to take a look at how we can render our XGen interactive groom splines, but we'll also include the regular XGen, the older XGen that we used in a previous module. You can see I've imported the beard and the eyebrows. So one of the nice things about rendering XGen, whether it's the older XGen or the newer interactive groom splines, is they really do work right out of the box. In fact, all I've done in this scene really is added in these three lights. And the lights are all at their default settings, with the exception of the fact that I shut off normalize on each one. So, and if we go ahead and load up our Arnold render view over here, give that just a second, let it update to the new angle, you can see it is in fact rendering. It's a little dark, so we'll go ahead and adjust that. Let's go ahead and grab the first area light, which is over to his left over here. And we'll go ahead and bring up our attribute editor. We'll go ahead and up that exposure to maybe six. Now that's going to be blown out, but I want it to be blown out for a reason, and I'll explain why in just a moment. Maybe we'll put this light off to his right to maybe a four, and the light behind him, the rim light, will also put it maybe six. So take a look at what's happening here. The hair is in fact rendering, and the hair looks fine. It looks like hair. However, notice that the intensity on his face isn't matched with the intensity on the hair. It almost looks like they're lit by two different sets of lights when it comes to at least the intensity of the lights. So this tends to happen with this physical hair shader. Now again, the physical hair shader is not designed for Arnold, but it is compatible with Arnold. So let me go ahead and grab that physical hair shader. I'm going to go ahead and grab the, the hair shader here. You can see I have a hair shader, eyebrows, and the beard. There we go. We'll grab the hair shader. And in order to lighten this up, what I need to do is actually drop down here and I'm going to go to Extra Attributes. And under Extra Attributes is AI KD IND. It's basically the, in, the, excuse, not the incandescence, it's the intensity of the indirect diffuse. So, and you can see as I increase this, we can see that the hair is going to brighten up. And you can you know, take this up considerably to see the effect. And you can see now the hair is starting to match a little bit closer with the intensity of the light. So that's true of all the shaders. Now we've talked about using this shader quite a bit already, so nothing really has changed there. Though personally, I actually don't really use this shader very much. I prefer to use, especially if we're rendering with Arnold, the built-in Arnold hair shader. So let me show you how we can actually apply that shader. I'll go ahead and close this off for right now. I'll go ahead and bring up my Hypershade. There we go. I'll come over here to the Arnold materials and I'll choose to create an AI hair. And you can see that pops in right over there. So, and what I need to do is select, oops, didn't mean to dock that. Let me just undock that really quick. There we go. So what I need to do is select my hairstyle 01 right over here. And I'll just right click on the AI hair and say assign material to selection. And you will see the hair turns that grayish color. So I'll also come here to human head and select the beard and the eyebrows, and we'll assign that as well. Assign material to selection. You'll notice those turn a darker, kind of almost black color. Don't worry, it's normal. They're just calculated a bit differently in the viewport. So let's go ahead and bring back our Arnold render view. Give that just a second to start updating, and we'll definitely kind of pull back out there a little bit. There we go. And you can see that it doesn't really look all that great. However, notice that it actually matches the intensity of the lights much closer. You could see the blown out highlights on his face now match the blown out highlights on the hair. Because this shader is designed for Arnold, it just tends to work a little better. It matches the actual Arnold shaders a little bit better. So I'll go to my area light now and we'll turn this down. Maybe we'll put the exposure to, let's try four, maybe five. On this one over here, or maybe we'll go down to three and on the one on back we'll go maybe down to four or five all right so now the lighting looks at least decent let's address working with this hair shader so i'm going to bring my hyper shade back up just so i can get access to that material um, i could also actually just select hairstyle though and get access to it here there we go ai hair and obviously it's just got a gray color so let's go ahead and assign a color that'll be a little bit more you know it's natural looking. I'm going to grab, not that gray is not natural, but we're going to give him maybe a, some dark brown hair. So something like that. Okay, and I'm going to apply that same color to the tip, and then we'll go ahead and darken the root considerably. Something like that. 
and the tip color will also go ahead and lighten a little bit and desaturate and notice that it's not really changing i still have this gray color i could see a little bit of that brown in there but it's not that much the reason is that the specular the glossiness is probably too low right now basically giving it a very broad highlight you can see as i tighten that we'll see that brown color come in so now i definitely want to probably decrease the weight of this considerably let me bring that down there and you can see the hair now starts to look a little bit you know more natural again maybe tighten that even a little bit more bring that down a bit more and actually the hair might be getting a little bit dark now so we'll go ahead and maybe lighten it just a touch desaturate a little bit there we go and you could see that one of the nice things about this shader it just tends to look a little bit more natural you could see the individual hairs just a little bit more you also have the ability to add your own indirect diffuse in here as well so you can see i can pop that in you can see the hair will render brighter that diffuse light or that diffuse color will kind of make it in there a little bit deeper you don't have so many of those deep shadows I think that's a little bit much. I'll probably turn mine down just a little bit here. You can also turn up or down the overall ambient diffuse. Now we also have secondary highlights over here. So I can go ahead and enable that. You can see the weight is off. You can see it's a little bit uh, bright and it's got that orangey color. I'm going to darken that considerably and desaturate right there. And we'll also go ahead and increase the glossiness to tighten that up a little bit as well. I think I might also decrease the intensity of that highlight just a little bit more we also have transmission which is going to give us that effect of light actually passing through the hair so you can see as i increase that we won't see too much of the effect here but we will see it towards the back where that light is It'll be a little bit more obvious if we kind of bring him over there you can see that backlight is going to obviously shine through there and clearly that doesn't look very good right now it's really really intense so we're going to bring that weight way down so maybe put it about there we'll go ahead and also desaturate that color and darken that color a bit and you can see it starts to look nicer we can also add the spread so it's a little bit smoother in how it blends in and now we have kind of a nice rim light to the hair back there so that's pretty much it it's a very very easy to use shader and you can see it can produce some really natural results very quickly especially if i kind of come in here a little bit closer you could see the hair does look nice. However, as we get this close, we can very quickly see our hair is way, way, way too thick. So we want to go ahead and address that thickness. So I'll go ahead and close that off. We'll go ahead and select our hairstyle here, and we'll go to our shape node. And I'm going to drop the thickness to maybe 0.07. So it's considerably thinner. And then, of course, if we take a render, we'll bring back our Arnold render view here. Give that just a second to catch up. You could see it will thin out. Now, the reason I did close this off is I find that when you sometimes change the geometry, this will not actually update. You have to close it and reopen it. So we could see the hair does look much more sparse now. So we do know there's several ways to go ahead and add the additional hairs. We could, of course, go into the base over here and up the multiplier. We could also go to our hairstyle shape over here drop down go to our render settings and increase the render density multiplier or of course add them in manually i'll go ahead and maybe double up over here but i think i'll also go to the hairstyle base here and maybe up this to 10. so just a little bit higher and let's go ahead and bring up our arnold render view once more this one will take a little bit longer now because it does have to go in and basically save out all these additional hairs in a separate file so that it can render double the amount of hairs i'm going to go ahead and pause while it goes ahead and finishes up all right so it's finished up and you can see it's now rendering our hair so you could see very, very easy to do. We have a much denser amount of hair, and you can see it's super easy to go in there and add as much hair as you need, continue thinning it out, and start to get a really, really nice natural look. So it takes a little bit longer to render now, but you could see it's looking pretty good. So that pretty much closes out this, uh, this module, and it also closes out the course. So let's go ahead and take a quick look at what we have covered in this module specifically about interactive uh, grooming splines. So we started by taking a look at how we can actually change our viewport display settings in case your video card is not compatible with the interactive groom splines. 
After that, we took a look at how we create interactive groom splines. We then took a look at using the interactive groom tools, things as the grab brush, the comb, the different length brushes, density brushes, and so on. We then took a look at working with multiple sculpt layers. That way we can actually sculpt different parts of our hairstyle, whether it's noise, whether it's the length, whether it's different curliness, you know, whatever it might be, volume. We can have each of those in a separate layer so that we can turn them on and off and even use sliders to change the amount each layer affects the overall hairstyle. After that, we took a look at using the different types of modifiers that are available to us. We then took a look at different ways we could adjust the density of our hair. That included using the density brush, using the place tool, and of course using the sliders, the one that allowed us to multiply the hair right there on screen, or of course the one that allowed us to only add more hairs at render time. We then took a look at animating the interactive groom spikes. We took a look at actually posing and keyframing the hair, as well as connecting it to the end hair system for dynamics. And finally, we finished things out by taking a look at how we can render the interactive groom splines. So that finishes out this module and it finishes out this course. Again, in this course, we covered a lot. We took a look at working with N hair. We took a look at multiple ways of working with classic X Gen, both the splines as well as the groomable splines. And of course, we took a look at the new interactive groom splines. Now, there's an enormous amount we haven't even been able to cover in this course regarding hair. This serves more as an introduction to the different types of hair. So please feel free to go in there and just start exploring these systems more and more. It's been my pleasure to be the instructor for this course, and I look forward to seeing you in more of my courses in the future. I'll see you all there.